what are test specifications? Test specifications are essentially the design document for the test. In other words, they give guidance on how the test is to be constructed and what the test contains, what the test looks like, basically. And who are they for? They're intended for a variety of different audiences. I mean, fairly obviously from what I've said, uh, they must be aimed at test users uh, to give people who are going to use the test uh, an idea of what it's about, what level it's at, uh, what it's intended for, and so on, so that they know whether it's appropriate to take it or to teach students towards it. So test users, teachers and students in particular. But um, more importantly, perhaps, in terms of test construction, they're aimed at test writers. In other words, the item writers, the people who are going to construct the tasks, are the people who have to instruct people on how to write tasks, and so on. They're also intended for test validators, for people who are going to investigate whether the test is valid, who are going to uh, make judgments about the test in terms of its, its usefulness from a variety of perspectives. They have to refer to the document, uh, the specifications document, which is the design for the test. And finally, they're intended for the general public, so that the general public can be informed about the test and, and, and what it's intended to do and how it's intended to measure it. So there are various audiences for test specifications. And, and what do they contain? Well, that depends in part upon the audience. Um, fairly obviously, a document that is aimed at the general public will be couched at least in less technical language than the document that's aimed at item writers and it will be shorter, it will be intended to be intelligible to the average person. Um, whereas test specifications written for item writers will uh, be fairly technical and much more detailed. Any test specification, be it for item writer or for the general public, should contain information about test purpose. What is the aim of the test? Uh, what is it intended to say about language ability in the case of language tests? So test purpose is extremely important and related to that is what is the use of the scores that uh, the test results in? What can they be used for? That relates to purpose. Also, ideally, they should also say what should the test scores not be used for to avoid test misuse. That's perhaps less common. Um, test specification should define the test taker. Who should take this test, who is the test intended for, and who is it not intended for, what age of candidate, what educational background, or what intentions might the candidate have in the future, uh, if the test is intended to say something about the test taker's ability to do something in the future. So test purpose and test taker are important to define. Then at a more technical level, it should contain design information on what the test is intended to test, what skills it tests, not only in terms of broad terms as a reading test, as a listening test, but what do we mean by listening? How does the test define the listening? What sorts of texts are on, on the test? Uh, what might be their topics, their difficulty levels, uh, their lengths, what types of texts are they? If they're recorded texts, what sorts of recordings are they? What sorts of situations do they come from? What functions do the texts have? And so on. Um, and also with respect to the tasks, uh, not just the items, but what is it that the test takers have to do on the test? What sorts of uh, questions are they asked? How are they expected to use the text, listening or reading, or need input for writing tasks and so on? What do they have to do on this test? How long is the test? How long are the different tasks? How many are there? And so on. In, sen in essence, anything that an item writer would need in order to be able to write an adequate test for the purpose for which it's defined by the specifications. Um, how are they produced is an interesting question um, because there is a belief that once you've written specifications then all you have to do is go away and actually write the test, the items. But in practice what happens is that as items are written to specifications you discover there may be problems with the specifications and they have to be revised. 
when the specifications are revised, then clearly items will have to be revised in the light of the new specifications. Uh, and so, in fact, the production of test specifications is a cyclical process. It's iterative. You might start with specifications and go to items, then revise your specifications to new items. Then, very importantly, you will pre-test your items and discover that some work and some don't work for possibly design reasons rather than technical reasons. And therefore, you have to revise the design in the light of the testing, the pre-testing, in order to... Uh, get better specifications. So specifications are evolving documents uh, and you have to be aware of what version of specifications you might be looking at when you're looking at what tests uh, you are thinking of taking or writing or, or using. Test specifications are constantly updated and change in the light of experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm.